between his legs, down on top of his head, into the side of his body, thrusting this way, chopping down with that big nasty tooth right there coming into his head or his eye or his teeth. You'll rip it right out of his face for self-defense, sticking it in his neck, into the chest, ripping the muscle off the bone for self-defense. This self-defense training video, we're gonna talk about walking cane versus walking stick, which is better for self-defense. I'm gonna start with my walking stick. Now this is an Irish shillelagh. It's a simple stick. It looks like most walking sticks, it's the same length, about 36 inches as you hold it here in your hand. Your wrist should bend just a little bit. Now from here, the first thing that you're gonna see is you can slide your hand down the back by bending your knees and then come up into this position where you're putting the stick between you and the threat. We're gonna call this bag the threat. So as I'm walking down the street, someone's coming up to me aggressively, I know I'm gonna to need to defend myself. I put the other hand up between me and him and I'm gonna lift in this position and probably go straight in for a strike if I have to. Now this is one type of strike you can do. You can also bring it up to the side of your face like you're answering your phone, put your front hand on it and then thrust through the soft tissue of his body, always going for the center line of his body. From this position, you could also extend this punch and turn your hand over so your thumb goes down, striking on the side of his head or into his body, maybe into the leg. From here, you can also bring it into that front hand and push the back hand forward as you slide this big knob, a hole in there, and they put in lead shot or molten lead. So this is actually a lot heavier than your average stick. But most walking canes, or walking sticks might have a nice hard brass knob there anyway. And so you would use that for self-defense. Pushing, turning your shoulders and hips, striking, driving, even stepping to increase the power of your strike. You could also in this position, use it to push straight through, coming in to his teeth or his nose or his face for self-defense, destroying his ability to see you or breathe temporarily, permanently through the throat. For self-defense, you want to adopt principles of self-defense that are gonna keep you safe. I did put a link below if you wanna see those principles of self-defense as defined by Tim Larkin in his book, When Violence is the Answer. It's a great book. It'll change your whole perspective about self-defense if you haven't read it. The link is below. Now, those are just some simple strikes that you can do. The nice thing about a walking stick is that you have reach advantage. If he has a bladed weapon like a knife or even a machete, a hatchet, you still have the ability to use this stick and strike him, keeping him off. Even if you push this way, you could also lift it up between his legs and bring it down over the top of his head, smashing. So a lot of things you can do with this walking stick. You can take this walking stick most places that you go. I recently heard from you that some of you take this on the plane, this exact type of walking stick in Irish Shalala, and TSA never stops you and never questions your need for this. The law doesn't protect this walking stick the way it does the walking cane. Lots of benefits, almost no reason not to carry a walking stick for self-defense. Now the walking cane has a few more features. I'm gonna show you those features, but the most important feature is that there are laws that allow you to carry this that don't protect you when you carry the walking stick. So when it has a crook at the end like this, you're allowed to take it more places legally than you can the walking stick. Is your ability to take it places that you can't take the other stick. Now, you can carry this walking stick with the crook facing out. Ergonomically, that's going to be a stronger, better position for you. You can lean into it. It just becomes an extension of your arm. So from your shoulder to the tip, that's a very long lever. Snatching that up between his legs, down on top of his head, into the side of his body, thrusting this way chopping down with that big nasty tooth right there coming into his head or his eye or his teeth. You'll rip it right out of his face for self-defense, sticking it in his neck, into the chest, ripping the muscle off the bone for self-defense. These are some of the advantages of using the self-defense walking cane. This is a cane master's cane. I put a link below. A lot of people here who train with me will start with the rattan cane. This rattan cane is made out of a grass that moves very fast through the air because it's light and it's nearly indestructible. Now this 
oak cane. You can get this in oak. I prefer it in hickory. I'll put a link below if you wanted to get started with these. These are super inexpensive and they're nice looking. You can take them anywhere. This is the Cane Master self-defense cane. There's a link below. These hit a lot harder. This is gonna compress the flesh and then break the bone using a cane like this with proper technique for self-defense. So from this position in this uh, crook facing back instead of facing forward, you can do all of the same things, bringing it in the same way. You can bring it up to your hip, step in, thrust through his body. You can change positions. So this big knuckle is here thrust through his body that way. You can reach in, rip something off like we said before, just like the walking stick, you can smash that through his face, you can box the sides of his ears, you can bring that in to the, his eyes, his nose, his throat. Again, anything you can remove for self-defense using those basic principles as I mentioned before. But those are some of the differences. Now, the question is, which is better for self-defense? And I'll say, I'll give you three categories that I think about for you to make your decision. Number one, which can you carry more places? Now, legally, technically, you can carry this more places. However, I have found from you, mostly when you guys send me comments, that a lot of people take this and have no problem taking this everywhere that this one goes. So this, yes, legally, you do have more protection, but most people who see this Put it in the same category as this one so you end up taking this wherever you can take this one anyway that's number one number two those techniques that you can do this has the advantage it's the same length from here to here still 36 inches if you get the cane master's cane you can have them make it really long if you're super tall you can have them make it shorter if you're shorter or you can cut it yourself if you wanted to so you can have these in different lengths uh, walking sticks, most walking sticks, same thing. If you get a custom made stick, you can have it any way you make, or you can make your own stick, any length you want. So they're pretty similar there. However, this one has both, has the same thing as this. This is, I think of this as a fist. I think of this as a bigger fist with a big old round knuckle. You can smash right through his teeth, knock his teeth down his throat for self-defense or smash his nose, smash his eyes. But then this crook here, this little beveled edge that most of these cane masters canes have, that can go in and that will literally do a lot of damage for self-defense, giving you an advantage with this walking cane over the walking stick. So I'll say in the first category, you can take this one more places technically, but I'm finding that this goes almost exactly the same place as this one does. I've even seen people in the plane with different style walking sticks that don't have any crook and they get them through TSA, they have them on the plane with them, and then they get off in their destination and they just walk right off the plane with it. So I've seen a lot of people taking a walking stick the same place they can take the cane. So in the first category, I think it's a wash. Second category, this definitely has the advantage if you know how to use this crook. There are also other ways that you can hook an arm, hook a leg, rip his leg out from him. If you're sitting on a park bench, you can reach out, you can grab, you can pull somebody into an elbow all using that hook or crook at the end. So that's advantage walking cane over the walking stick. But the third category is which one do you like to carry better? Now, I would say this looks like you have more medical need. This for some people makes them feel older and they don't like it, especially if you're younger and you need a cane or you need a walking stick for mobility. You might not wanna carry this because it makes you feel um, like you look more vulnerable, you look more feeble, whatever the words are. So you might choose something that's a little bit more stylish. And I would say that this Irish Shalala, which is Blackthorn, is very attractive. And especially with that multicolored knob up there, it just looks prettier. It's extremely strong. If these two get in a fight, I don't know which one's gonna win. This is nice and heavy oak, but this, this one seems unbreakable to me. This one seems like it might be a little bit stronger, a little bit harder. So it really comes down to your style, what fits you better, what makes you feel better about yourself, because you can do almost everything with the walking stick that you can do with the walking cane. Just a little bit of difference. Now, one thing that I'll, th I'll finish with that I'd like you to see is that using either one, you can use a resistance band. I take the band and I put my resistance band right there on the walking cane or the walking stick, and you have a home gym now that you can use to improve the strength of your strikes. 
So this is the resistance coming on this band. You got it twisted there a little bit. I like to put it here, the top of the body, and then press. And as you press, you wanna hold for a little bit and let those muscles start to activate with the blood getting to the muscle. And you're gonna get stronger doing these standing push-ups. And I like to go straight out for 30 seconds. As you age, and age is just a number, as you age, your body responds better to time under pressure. That means how long you do it as opposed to how many repetitions. So when you were younger, you went to eight reps, 12 reps, 10 reps, depending on the exercise. Now I want you to think 30 seconds. How long can you do it for 30 seconds? If it's too heavy, go lighter. After that, rest for 30 seconds and then press down, activating the lower part of your chest. You're also doing a lot of work in your triceps and your shoulders and your back that are gonna make all of your strikes stronger. After 30 seconds here, rest, and then pressing up. And you get 30 seconds there. I also like to start on the forehead and press away, which is really focusing on those triceps. A lot of the strikes that you're gonna do with the walking stick or the walking cane are pulling techniques and pushing techniques. So you need a strong back, strong chest, strong triceps, and strong biceps. And for the biceps, you slip it under your bum, you lean back a little, and then you pull. And always, again, squeeze, and hold at the top of that motion and really activate those biceps and build better strength than just using the weights. If you do the machines or the weights in the gym, that's great. You'll get good, pretty looking muscles. Go to the beach, take your shirt off. But if you use a band, you're gonna get dense, quick, explosive muscle fibers that are gonna you, allow you to strike harder. Put in the comment section below, if you use a walking cane or walking stick already, and what your preference is or put in the comment section below which one you think you would like and then go figure it out come back later and tell me which one you like now if you want one of these bands i put a link below so you can find that information too reach out to me if you have any questions and i'll see you guys on the next one